Welcome back everybody. Got another special interview again with Mr. Gray. Uh, nothing intended for illegal purposes. Talking about history way, way back. Uh, education, knowledge, some fiction. Because we always tell stories sometimes. <laughs> How you doing, Joe? I'm pretty good, Richard. How are you today, brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I got some questions here from Brian and Dirty and just some stuff they wanted to ask you you know i think you know your your uh interviews man they're the some of the most watched if not the most watched people really enjoy them you know they like that you're open and just to you know seem like a regular guy but you know you have all this experience too that that you'll share now you know so i appreciate that well i'm doing it for my friend brother you know that i know that i know that and thanks for all your help too well, I, I told you, if you run out of somebody to talk to, I'll waste some time. We'll waste their time. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, you know, man, sometimes we we don't even talk dogs that much. We talk about horses and family and geography and history and whatever it is, you know. We just love oh, yeah. conversing with each other. Conversations go a million different directions, brother. Yeah, yeah. All righty, so first question is, uh, did you feed anything off of Can-Am's Little Rock? If so, what do you think of the Little Rock and his offspring litter mate to champion Beetlejuice? Basically, the Can-Am stuff. Okay. I went in to Beetlejuice with Barred Bob, a straight bred cardinist dog, a son of Shorty. Mm. And... But somebody else picked the weight on the dog. And I worked him for somebody else, Joe LeBlanc. You see it, it's back in the records. Right. And we'd already clipped Keith pretty good, and he owed us one. And I got the dog, and I called him up. I said, hey, brother, I need to drop that weight. We was hooked at 42. He said, where do you want to go to? I said, oh, about 38. And he laughed. He <laughs> said, you out of your mind. <laughs> I said, come on, buddy, give me a little leeway here. He said, I'll go to 41. So we went at 41. And we get there, and I, you know, we way up in Frontier Town on another another uh, roll bar show. <laughs> McGillivray said, you mind if I look at your dog? I said, I don't give a damn. You're going to have to look at him tomorrow anyway. <laughs> so I get him out and set him on the ground, and McGillivray goes to laughing. He says, you wasn't lying. He said, I can tell you right now, that little dog right there is never going to stand in front of Juice. I'm going to beat your ass in less than a half hour. Juice is going to kill him. He didn't have to. He bit that sandwich one time, and that shorty dog skied up and quit. <laughs> and Juice was a bad son of a bitch. I seen him win, too, and then he beat that blondie dog. No, he beat the dog that that beat Blondie's what it was for Roadblock. Okay. A lot of money changed hands. And a Little Rock, I seen him, and damn, man, he took a scrubbing. A scrubbing, Richard, and come off the bottom and won. Wow. Well, then the same show that Beetlejuice beat John Louie and them, I think it was. Yes, because that's when Josiah made so much money. <laughs> that weekend. Yeah. And Beetlejuice beat John Louie and them. And the same show, Bayonne had a bitch called Deanna in it. And she went pretty resoundingly too. And he asked, you know, asked me, maybe you could breed Deanna to, to Beetlejuice. And I said, yeah, we could, but let's breed to Little Rock. <laughs> so, yeah, we fed puppies off from Little Rock. Mm, nice. Nice. We bred Deanna to Little Rock. Yeah. How how was uh, Little Rock bred? He was from Garrett's Rock, which was at that time belonged to Bob Lowry up there in Week WCC. And uh, I think Bad Becky, maybe. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, Bad yeah. Bad Becky was off from the Assassin too. And something else, but they was bulldogs, man. You, you, uh, you remember when we was in Moray and that dude that come up and told told OTK he had beat me in a match. Yep. 
And he told OTK, the motherfuckers didn't beat me. They fouled me out when I kicked their dog back right. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I won that match, bro, about 40 minutes with a son of Little Rock. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's what pissed me off so bad. I had a bulldog, and they had a cur. I had no business in there and happened to kick that motherfucker back to them. <laughs> yeah. Should have been over at 40 minutes, you know? I agree. I've seen yeah. it. You know that. I've seen that. <laughs> well, when you get down behind them and give them an old hump halfway across the box, that ain't kosher. That's cheating. That's well, a foul. Well, the time of that, and I kicked the motherfucker back to him. You know how I get. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I don't consider that a loss, Richard. It ain't. Mm -mm. Anytime you got to cheat to win, that's not a win. So we're on board with that. Yeah, but them two dogs were exceptional dogs, brother. Yeah. I ain't kept nobody in Little Rock. Didn't have the career Beetlejuice did. He didn't get the fame as Beetlejuice. But Little Rock showed extreme bottom end. Mm. Yeah. And threw some good ones, was, too. I was perfectly happy with the one I had from him. Yeah. Yes. Nice. nice. Okay. Uh, he wanted to know about, you know, your, your, uh, you know, were you familiar with some of these guys? I wrote them down. Roll bar kennels. That was the first guy I met in Canada. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Hell of a good guy, man. Very outgoing you know he he brought rapid rowing he brought sancho boats from all the way yeah up there in guelph to the, right here to the barn and we went up the road and tore some ass up with him <laughs> he, uh, yeah yeah i can't remember if he brought sancho first or rapid roy first i think he brought rapid roy uh-huh yeah he conditioned him over the telephone if you know what i mean yep yep that's the time I told you the guy went to feeding up the sweet potato so he could sell it. Yeah. Mine yeah. More. yeah, that made it completely different, I guess. You, know? <laughs> uh, you don't feed a sweet potato. I said, well, I don't, and I really don't know anybody else that does. Yeah. But you'd be amazed how many son bitches feed sweet potatoes now because he come up with that concept. Yeah, they, they do now. And, yeah, and you know, after that. 30 years ago, didn't nobody feed no damn sweet potato. No, I never... Well, I eat them, you know, but yeah. I wouldn't put them to the dog. Yeah. Them. I like them with butter on them. Yeah, I never had a notion to do that back in the day, but, you know, uh, people, e even just like for confirmation shows, you know, that's part of their, their quote unquote keep diet, sweet potato. Well, or they just. recommend them sweet potatoes because a roll bar kennel invented that yeah, shit. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> no, you true. I ain't yeah. never fed no sweet taters, and I don't know anybody it does, but you roll with it, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, he made him an internet magazine before anybody even knew what they was. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'll tell you what else he can do. That some bitch can fuck your computer world up from his house. Wow. Or he can fix it from his house, and he could do that in 1990. Yeah, wow. He was a computer whiz, yeah. bro. Way ahead of the curve, man. Way, way. He had Windows 3 before they released Windows 1. Huh. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. How about uh, Norman Kimmer? Norman was a great guy. Mm -hmm. You'd never meet a better guy. I put him and my hero in the same, just right there at the same level. Is if a man wanted somebody to look up to in Bulldogs, he was one you could. Nice. Yeah. Yes, he was a perfect gentleman. I'd never seen him do anything that, like foul, crooked, or anything. And, you know, I've heard people try to lay a little bit of shit at Norman's door, but they lying. Right. They lying. Right. Yeah, that was a straight-up guy. Yeah, he don't he don't have that reputation, man. He just... No, hell no. And anybody that talks shit on Norman, they, they exactly talking shit. There ain't no truth in it. Right. That was a class guy. Right. Yeah. How about uh, Victor Cruz? Oh, I love Victor. You know, he was a big old fucking clown, funny son of a bitch to be around. He was a character, man. That guy. God damn, we had a time. Him and Big Rick out there from the West Coast, and I met Rick, and he was, you know, he's a clown too. Big yeah. old son of a bitch. And <laughs> I think he's bigger than Victor was. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. And goddamn, he was talking shit, and I didn't even know Rick, but here comes Victor around the corner, and I said, goddamn, Victor, bring your big ass over here. Goddamn, Joe. I said, yeah, get over here. I said, I finally found a son of a bitch can talk more shit than you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Victor, with it ain't no way that motherfucker can talk more shit than me. I said, well, okay, he can talk, stay even with you. Yeah. yeah right. I love, hey, that whole bunch there around, around El Paso and Moriz was some good guys. Yeah, they were. Did Always. you meet Frank? Who? Frank. From Moriz Espinosa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Long Great. time ago. Yep. Great guy, man. Yeah. Him and Rosa. Man, they. They invited me and, and my old lady into their home like, hell, we was family. Wow. We treated them the same over here, but we both lived very simple lives. Right. You know, and they were good people. Yeah, yeah. There's something about and that right? El Paso crowd. They're just like that. Just like fun loving and have a good time and bullshit yeah, around even, and kid. And... Even Poncho. You know, with yeah. Poncho and Raul, man, yeah. Poncho was yeah. just a good guy. Mm -hmm. I yeah. like Raul, too, but, you know, me and Poncho was more on the same level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. On, online. Raul, Raul, Raul starches and irons his pants and shirts, and me and fucking Poncho wore fucking Levi's and goddamn T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. <and everything>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Raul, good people, too, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He is, and he'd been at it a while, man. Yeah, a lot of experience. He cranked, he cranked up around 1990, early 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yeah. started coming here. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, Can-Am boys, talk a little bit about them. Well, the Can-Am, that's McGillivray. Mm-hmm. Now, the other one in the Can-Am boys was named Tim, I think. Okay. And he was from over somewhere in Maine or somewhere. Right. And I met him a couple of times, but I never saw him compete. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, McGillivray, when he first come out the gate, he was green as a gourd, you know, and he was buying somebody else's promise. Mm -hmm. And he bought a couple of dogs, one from Battle Creek, Michigan. <laughs> and it didn't work out. Then he bought another one from this Russian boy up mm -hmm. there in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And he gave $3,500 for it. And he set it down in front of, uh, what was that bad fucking dog? Chambuga. Okay. Well, in three minutes, that son of a bitch is, he's out of there. Wow. And it was a long story, you know. You've read Roll Bars. Rapid Roy story. Well, that asshole it, the next morning told him, I think they'll both fucking quit if we rolled them, and that was me. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's you well, in the story? I was, I was right. Yeah, they didn't mention my name, but yeah. my friend from down south, well. And it wasn't nobody but me and Robar that morning in that barn, and when we kicked them two curs loose, and uh, the door opened, and there was a whole crowd. Oh, shit. And Robar jumped up and fingered me. It was all his idea. Mm. Like we was committing a cardinal fucking sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And boy, big-ass McGillivray, he was a UFC fighter, dude. I ain't got no business arguing with this kid. <laughs> but uh, he bowed up on me. I, sh I shouldn't even moan a dog. Mm. You know, that was animal abuse. And I said, well, i tell you what, buddy. My dog got to take a little bit of abuse, I figure, in this contest. I said, what was that last night, your first match? He said, no, it was my second because it had already been with that Battle Creek dog. And uh, I said, well, it was pretty easy to tell. I said, you could have wasted that time at home and saved yourself and us, too, a million miles of driving because, hell, he lived 14 hours from where we was at. Mm. And I lived 17 hours from where we was at, and we both drove there, mm. driving time. Right, right. Yeah, and he said, well, I bought him as a match dog. And I asked him who from, and he told me, and I laughed. I said, let me guess, you give him $3,500. 
He looked at me, how in the hell did you know that? I said, well, he sold my friend a match dog too and matched into him and I loaned my friend the dog and beat his ass. <laughs> and McGillivray fingered me, I know you. You that no good son of a bitch. He told me about you from Texas. I said, yep, I'm him. But uh, I don't know who's a no good son of a bitch. Somebody that sold you a fucking two minute curve for thirty five hundred dollars, or me who didn't let that guy fuck my friend out of seven thousand dollars, eighty five hundred to be exact, because he had matched into the dog he sold my friend for five thousand. Mm. I loaned him a dog, Richard, and he put him over the wall in nineteen minutes. Mm. And then I become a no-good son of a bitch because I headed him off at the pass and didn't let him fuck an innocent guy. Yeah. Yeah. Who that's never the, that's the true the story dog. there. That's the true story. And when I told McGillivray that, and he said, well, what would you do if you was me? I said, I'd call that son of a bitch and tell him, hey, your car's on the way, send my money. So he called him off from roll bar's phone and told him what happened. He said, and I want my money. And that guy, and he said, and by the way, you know who I'm standing right here talking to? That no good son of a bitch from Texas. <laughs> well, that popular high-priced guy, he could chunk, he hung up. Mm. Then he wrote a two-page story to Jack about McGillivray. Mm. <laughs> and you never seen McGillivray after that little story come out. And he never put another word in the journal, never put another ad or nothing. Yeah. No. Yeah. What do you call it when you, he, uh, I don't know, he just blacklisted Jack. He said, man, you wrote that shit about me and you won't write my reply. Mm. But, you know, Jack, would, he would do that. If you bought a full page ad, he'd treat you with favoritism. Mm hmm wouldn't badmouth you at all, but he'd let somebody badmouth you if you was just a commoner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And who was worse than him was Bobby Smith. He'd jump in there and help him kick you and stomp on you. No shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about uh, Bill Carr? Man, I knew uh, Bill for years and years. And never met him until the same day I met Gene Matson. And I, I didn't know Bill Carr was an Indian until I run into him. Mm -hmm. But my friend that used to advertise for years and years in the journal, the Yosemite Sam ad. Right. Bucking bulls and hardware. He had he raised bucking bulls before it was popular up there on the Oklahoma border on the Red River. And Bill always advertised it's he had bullet and i think a dog called elmer mm -hmm. i remember bullet yeah i think he might have been elmer's daddy because they was both one of them when one got too old the other one took his place in that ad i can tell you that okay <laughs> and bill went to jail and glenn was out mowing his damn bull pasture and had a heat stroke in the middle of August up there in Oklahoma. Mm. And I went up there and he had a shitload of about four or five old black and white spotted bitches and an old, old black male dog and he had Bishop Hilliard Shadrach there. Mm. And he had uh, three young black dogs and a couple that I'd let him take up there. And when he had that stroke, they didn't expect he was going to live and nobody's going to. So I loaded up and drove to Oklahoma and got the young, healthy dogs. And I took Shadrack because Petey wanted him bleed water kennels. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what them old dogs was. Hell, it was like new bitches and it was Bill's brood stock. And nobody coming to help nobody nothing hell i can't leave them up there to die on the chain i got no place to put them so richard i put all of them down oh shit. yeah yeah i'm gonna carry them back there in the back of the pasture and put them all in a pile mm -hmm. and then the way really that i got to know bill because somebody was sitting there and they was bad mouthing my friend at one of them get togethers up in oklahoma and they called him a fucking dope head, let them dogs die. And it pissed me off. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't even know who it was said it, but I knew the dogs he was talking about. And I told him, shut your fucking mouth. He wasn't a goddamn dope head. I know that. And uh, I said, and he didn't let them fucking dogs die. I killed them. And when I said I killed them, Bill stepped up. He said, you're Joe. I said, that's right. He said, man, I'm glad to meet you. And I, that's how I met Bill and Gene. Wow. Yeah. And, and I told Bill, I said, damn, I didn't know you was an Indian. He said, yeah. I said, what kind of Indian are you? He said, I'm half uh, Cherokee and half Apache. And I laughed and told him that's a hell of a battle cross. <laughs> <They come up>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, buddy, over here in the nation, it ain't no telling what kind of fucking crosses you come up with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Gene, Gene's an Indian, too. He's half Indian. They right. had the same grandma. Their mamas were sisters. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Did the, is Bill still alive, do you know? No, he's dead. Okay. He, matter of fact, he died about six months after I met him. I met him and Joe Bill Woody and Gene Matson all the same day. Oh, okay. At a show? Uh, no. Oh. No, at a at a, a, a party, you know. I think it might have been a party they throwed for Danny somewhere. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, and me and my granddaughter went up there to play music, and I'll tell you who else I met that same day was uh, Paul Rodriguez, which he had seen me before, but I didn't, you know, it's kind of like when you and me right. passed years and years ago. Right. Yeah. We didn't know each other back then. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, I think I've seen pictures of that. It's, uh, well, I'll tell you what, it was a guy named Jerry Epley. Okay. And him, him and Paul was sitting there arguing, and Jerry, oh, he's a fucking cur. I almost beat him out of my They kept on, and Paul said, I don't give a fuck what you say. He wasn't no goddamn cur. said, if he had been a cur, that goddamn bad Mexican dog would have stopped him. Mm. And I'm still not knowing who these two guys is, but I sitting there listening when he said that badass Mexican dog, and he said, Scambooger. And I said, are y'all talking about Gator? And mm -hmm. Paul Rodriguez said, yeah. I said, Crenshaw's Gator? Paul said, no, he's Rodriguez's Gator. I owned the dog. I said, well, I'll tell you this. Don't make shit who owned him. He was not a cur dog. What? I said, he wasn't no cur dog. I'll give that son of a bitch his last bath. And I then when I said that, Paul instantly recognized me. You know, right. God damn, I know who you are now. <laughs> and that's how I feel. Hell, Gator ain't no cur. Yep. Yep. Like, like, like me and you talked, I don't give a damn who owns them. If they're a bulldog, you give the dog the credit. That's right. That's right. He proved himself. Yeah. And the same with B.B. Red and Banjo. It wasn't their fault. Coy owned them. They was good dogs. They was good. They shit. BB Red was a great dog, brother. Yeah. If y'all would ever got to see her, you'd know what I'm saying. Yes, sir. That bitch didn't fuck around. She <laughs> killed you, and she killed you right here, right now. Or you curred and pissed all over yourself right here, right now. Didn't take long either, huh? Dude, on the opening scratch, she hit Creel's dog, and it went to screaming and pissing and trying to shit. Mm. Wasn't nothing but fluid coming out its ass, but it was coming. That brawl, you know. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Damn. Damn. Yeah. I mean, a minute and a half. Wow. She was that bad. She was bad, bro. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. You yeah. know, hell. I thought Flame could have whooped her if Flame and her would have come together when both of them bitches was prime and wanting to fight. Mm-hmm. And the night them two dogs went at each other, and neither one of the bitches wanted to fight. And the truth is told that you could hear that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. All righty. Next one, DSK. Who is that? Uh, I don't know. If you don't know them, that's okay. That's, uh, well, they, if I knew the name. Yeah, they have, uh, they had that champion Cole Cheese dog. They had... Some of the, you know, similar stuff were bred down from Banjo and and uh, BB Red and that. Oh, DSK. Yeah, DSK. DSK, Dead Serious Kennels. There you go. That's it. Them was 
two good guys, man. When they the dead serious kennels that I know, Mark Davis wasn't dead serious kennels. Right. It was a boy they called White Boy Mike, I think, and Jerry Wiley. Okay. Yeah, and hell, they was good competitors, serious, and I mean straight up fair guys, you know. Yeah. 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 How about uh, Mr. Norman Hooten? Did you ever meet him? I, yeah, and I told you I felt bad for that man. Mm -hmm. He was a he was he was kind of like some of them guys over far east of here, man. You can't play both sides of the damn fence to forever. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, it's going to catch you. Mm -hmm. And you know all of Danny's difficulties and. Our old friends over all up through here, like 160-something of them, got in trouble. Mm -hmm. Behind one guy's testimony, and that guy, well, it then a girl. But every bit of that was started to get Norman. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the Texas Department of Public Safety started that investigation. Right. Because Norman was a president of the Texas sheriff's association mm -hmm. and they couldn't stand that right and they was gonna get I him one way or another huh they well hell man they set him up yeah and they was inviting anybody that was the hell you didn't have to be somebody they called me four times begging me to come to that show and i tell you it was uh bobby smith from texas and Ron Jackson, the son of a went on the TV bragging about doing it. Mm -hmm. He went on the 700 Club. Right. And he got our old big buddy tangled up in it. I told you about our buddy throwing that dog at that son of a bitch and knocking him back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, man. Yeah. How about uh, Richard Fisher? Oh, Fish, man. He'd been dead a long time, but old Fish, your fish come. You better get ready for a long night. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I never seen fish touch a dog. Fish would work them dogs for three or four weeks, and then Danny would come finish them up. Right. Yeah, and the first time I ever laid eyes on Danny, it was him and the big fish. And Danny, I told you, knocked that son of a bitch through the barn wall. And I... Snatched another one out off of his back over his shoulder and knocked him out when he hit the ground flat of his back. <laughs> yeah. So I, I found out one thing. Don't pull a pistol on Danny Burton unless the next thing you better be pulling the trigger the same time you're pulling that <laughs> yeah. gun out. Yeah. yeah. That big son bitch will hurt you. Yeah. Well, uh, Fish was big, too. He was a big guy, wasn't he? Oh, he was bigger than Danny, oh, but he didn't have the damn... Danny was just, whoo. Yeah. Man, Danny had muscles in places most people ain't even got places. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Back in, goddamn, dude. Yeah. I told him, Danny, just to look from your cuddle to some bitch's grandma's milk on the back porch 10 <laughs> miles away. Her trying to churn butter, and you done fucked her butter up just with an ugly look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. said, people walked on eggshells around you, partner. He said, you never was scared of me. I said, no, because I always knowed one thing. And he caught that old wire. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> I said, I could outrun your big ass. I always knowed I could. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't have run, big Joe. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> said, yeah I'm right. I ain't no fool. <laughs> Man, I seen a lot of big guys around that square through the years, Richard. And, you know, some massive football players, UFC fighters, goddamn boxers, you name it. If he's a professional athlete, some of them's been at that square. Right. All from all walks, plumb down into South America, you know that. Yep. The Gracies are in the Bulldogs they got from Bayonne. Mm -hmm. They got some of my blood down there from Bayonne. Right. Yep. Yeah. But I've never seen any one of them. And McGillivray, that's a big, bad son of a bitch in his day, dude. <laughs> but i never seen anyone that I thought could stand five seconds in front of my old buddy from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. we fighting people, though, man. We ain't fighting dogs. We're supposed to talk about dogs. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, that segues into uh, what type of character or personal attributes did Bayonne have that made him a good partner? Well, that's the thing, man. I tell people, me and that guy had absolutely nothing in common when it comes to how you should look at a bulldog or breed a bulldog. They all went for one thing, mouth, mouth, mouth. And he counted too much on mouth. Where I was just the opposite. Hell, I was a poor boy. I went for heart, heart, heart. Right. And I never made but one breeding ever that I didn't know that that dog's got a solid bottom end, and that was to be on Stu Fowler dog, mm -hmm. the Brooks dog. Right. Well, it turned out we got two damn good dogs out of that breeding. But I just, the guy was just, I mean, he would, he'd accept the challenge anywhere, and like I told y'all before, we was, or he was hooked, not we, because I couldn't do that shit. Right. He had two $20,000 matches. Well, he had three of them because he had just spent the money on one of them when Chambuga folded up. Then the next two was 20 and 20 mm. at 2500 forfeit, and the guy didn't have even, he had enough to pay one forfeit when he got there. And Bayon said, what the fuck? I th it was my thought, let's just fight him for 1250 apiece. Hell, you come to show him anyway. And I tell you what, when it was over, Gator got best in show, but the man that refereed the last match, who's our old buddy from up in, up at Dallas, you know, been around forever. Yep. He stood up and he said, I'm going to tell y'all one thing. He said, politics is going to give the best in show trophy to another dog. He said, but there's the best motherfucker in this show. Mm -hmm. And it was that blue bitch, Osoga. Mm-hmm. He said, that's her eighth win, and there ain't a mark on her. You could go win a confirmation show with her tomorrow. Nah, damn. Well, they seen her do three of them. Yeah, she was that bad, huh? She was another one. She caught you right below the eyes, and she didn't let it go. And when you took her off, there wasn't nothing left there, just mush. Mm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, and she never got bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I guarantee you that bitch was game because she was half of that old Santander stock. Right. Oh, That's the only other dog I bred to, and he belonged to Bayonne, too. And he, I said, okay. And he had hyper-extended hops, and I did it anyway. And the gamest son of a bitch probably had I, I ever seen come across there out of that stuff was he had hyper-extended hops. He's a red cat, and he didn't go nowhere. His three litter mates had pretty good careers. But he didn't because he couldn't push, but right. he went like 15 hours of box time as a roll dog. Wow. Well, you know, you didn't have to worry. Is he going to crank them? They, they yeah. either going to crank or they going to get eat alive. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what Greg said. He said, just looking across there at that son of a bitch is scary young dog to death. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bayon, you know, to me, he just a real respectable guy, you know, real. Oh, dude, the guy was, he was such a straight up. And I told you, you know, hell, we'd go down there and they'd go out on the town and got them, they'd go on shopping sprees and shit. Well, I don't need no fucking perfume. I don't <laughs> need no rings. I don't need no necklaces and none of that shit. But I'd have to go, you know, and while they're all spending their money, I'd walk around and check out, you know, just checking out. Hell, I'm in a foreign country, and we was in this huge mall down there, Richard. Yeah. And I'm looking at some little statues of horses. They're about two inches tall, you know, and I'm just looking at them, and I set it down, and I walked away. And I went to leave Mexico that, that week. And Bayonne outs with one of them fucking little horses huh. and gives to me. He's seen me looking at them horses and bought me one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, hell, and, and that's just the kind of guy he was. kind of guy he was. Um, he is. Yeah, he's not dead. I don't mean that. He's still, he's still yeah. around. I remember yeah. I met him years ago and just, like I said, just a yeah, nice yeah. guy, you know. Well, he's trying to get back mm -hmm. into him. And like I said, if I'll ask him. If he'll do an interview for yeah, you. That'd be great, man. Hey, and can I give a shout to Jay Viejo? 
Yes, sir. Well, he's in bad shape, brother, and I want, you know, the fraternity to know he he was dedicated for a long time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I talked to him or, or messaged him anyways the other day. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh he's doing as well as he can, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Richard, we all and, and we talked about that, you know. Just like the old timers get together every time next year when we show up, there'll be somebody ain't gonna be That's there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be somebody ain't gonna be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. there before. Yeah, seems yeah. to happen. Yeah, every year, man. Well, when Rude Dog was so insistent after the COVID getting that shit back to rolling, and he, he evidently he had an inkling. Yeah, that he had some he premonition or something. No yeah, because that was what he was so insistent. And I tell you, we ain't gonna be somebody won't be here next year. Yeah, yep. And, and that was the to... that was the last time he did that show, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hell and a half after that. Yeah. Liz woke up and she called down here screaming, Oh my God, he's cold and clammy. I think he's dead. Mm. And I was the first person she called. Damn. Call the damn call the hospital, call the ambulance. Right. Yeah. Mm. Damn. He was good people, man. Oh man. Just a hell of a guy. Solid. solid as a rock. Yeah. Well, who's the next son bitch next. we're going to kick around? Now, Bayon was a class act, though, brother. Yeah. yeah and that's... he's still just like my brother. Yeah. That's what I got I from him, you know. Yeah, yeah, I told him that. I said, buddy, he's never been one bad word come out of my mouth about you, no matter what who told you. Right. Or, or what was said. Right. I'll tell any son bitch I'll fight for Bayon. Yeah. That's Rocky. Rocky knows. Yeah, Rocky knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that flipped his ass out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it had to. He didn't even know what he had done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I like shit. I, I like Rocky. Yeah. Yeah, he's good people, too. He likes to he's drink. He's got good animals. Yeah, he, he does. He's got good he animals. Does. Yeah. He does. Rocky told me, he said, man, you cut me lower than I've ever been cut. I said, what the hell did I do? He said, you told me I need to leave the goddamn beer alone while I was fucking with my dog. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't cut you low, Rocky. I was telling you the truth. He said, yeah, but you said it in front of my wife. <laughs> I said, well, hell, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it helped you, though, because you quit drinking while you messing with your dog. He has, hadn't he? Yeah. Well, that's good, because yeah. he had some good dogs. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I've seen several of them, man. Yeah. Put on some hella shows down there, too. Oh, yeah. 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 He's a funny son, bitch. Yeah, he is. Always a good time, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, back in the day, how did you compare the quality of competition in the USA versus Mexico? Well... Back in the day when I first started going to Mexico, I'm going to tell you, the toughest place you could play in the USA was right here on this border. Right. Up and down the Texas border and Louisiana border, not the Texas-Mexico border. Mm -hmm. And Bayonne wandered his ass up to Reynosa. And I told y'all the first one of the interviews where he run into Norman, Joe T., and Bo Wells, and he spanked all three of them. And somebody told him, well, if you really want to prove what you got, you go to the big thicket. So he come to the thicket, and he showed the world what he had. He didn't win but one match at night, but he opened the eyes on some people. Mm. And then I went to go into Mexico. And, brother, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm about the only one, I think, Let's see, what Mickey Mouse successfully come out of there with? Rayo, the little 27-pound male. Mm -hmm. That's the only one he brought out of there successfully, mm -hmm. out of Mexico. Yeah. And I was down there, and two big names, they showed up there, Mr. S and Mr. G. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, sir. 
and they was talking nine miles of shit, and Mr. S, he just was there. He wanted to taste the candy one more time. Son, you're going to see the best 46-pound male in the fucking world. And I told him, you ain't look for no cakewalks down here. Ah, oh, they ain't got shit here. I said, well, don't look for no cakewalks. Well, Mr. G, he asked me, well, Joe, how long have you been coming down here? I said, oh, hell, nine or ten years. Well, the other guy, well, how many times they beat you? I said, oh, they ain't never beat me. And he laughed, and he said, well, that's good enough proof. They ain't got shit here. They'll beat you. I said, I've just been lucky. I'm just telling you guys don't look for no cakewalks. Well, I got my ass spanked that day. No oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I told you a 17-year-old boy beat me. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, goddamn, the next step up was the two big boys with the best 46-pounder in the world. That same boy beat them two minutes faster than he beat me. I was so fucking proud. <laughs> <laughs> You lasted two minutes longer than they did. <laughs> I lasted two minutes longer than the best 46-pounder in the world with my goddamn 38-pound cur. Yeah, yeah. Because I had a cur, and I ain't going <laughs> to lie to nobody. I went with the wrong son of a bitch. Yeah. And, you know, I was counting on bloodlines. And that's when I found out it don't matter how good mama and daddy is, it's what you got here between your feet. Right. He proved that to me, you right. know. Right, right. And that kid was 17 years old? Yeah, and anyway, and, we all get back, and Ernesto, you met Ernesto. Yeah. And Raul, goddamn, they had piled up betting on me, because most of the times they were my, Ernesto was my opponent more than anybody down there. Mm -hmm. And Because they'd fight to get in line on who was going to get to whoop me, you know. Right. And... Anyway, they come out, why did you never bring a piece of shit like that to us? And I said, hey, I didn't know he was a piece of shit. I didn't come to give it away. But then S&G, they called over to Bayonne and, well, don't you, y'all don't report that match. Mm. I said, well, well, wait a minute. What about them two wins y'all did report? Don't report the match and Beyond wanted to know what they wanted, and I told him. He said, oh, it's no problem. We won't report it. I said, fuck that. They reported the wins on him. Yeah, it don't matter. We ain't going to report it. I said, bud, that, I'm going to tell you something. I said, that kid deserves the credit. That's two of the biggest names that's ever been in dogs. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I said, the country of Mexico deserves credit. More especially after the shit that was talked, he said, Bud, the whole country of Mexico celebrates tonight, not because they beat them. They celebrate because they beat you. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, but we didn't report the matches, so nobody even knows that. And I tell you what, there's been a lot of big timers from a lot of different places in the world show up in Mexico and get their ass handed to them. I've seen it myself. Over and over. Yes, sir. And I think the difference is, Richard, until here lately, they started buying dogs every fucking morning. and they fucking their dogs up. Mm -hmm. Because they had, goddamn, Zeke putting their own paperwork. You know, uh, Goros on the paperwork. Yeah. All of that, you know. All, all them, uh, you, you know, all them famous dogs from get. here. They had either litter mates to them or offspring off of them. Yeah, or at, at sometimes them dogs. Them, down them there, dogs, yeah, said. you're right, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Goros was a, a full brother to, to Bolio. Yep. You know, Bronx was a half brother to Bolio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and they had different Zeke, other Zeke dogs too, you know. Oh, yeah, but and they Bronx had, is what's behind them Santander dogs. Right, right. And they had, of course, the no booger stuff and yeah and i think what the difference was they had a gamer line down there than we had up here right because they was closer to the game dogs but when they went to trying to breed out and arnaldo did that mm -hmm. yes sir he introduced what was that dog of Floyd he brought down there shorty's daddy was it t bud or t bud yeah you got it mm -hmm. you got it 
see, Floyd had so many here and there, I get them mixed up. That's what I told you. I couldn't remember if Crazy was before Maverick or after Maverick. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what that was. That was mouth. But I tell you what, if they couldn't apply it, they'd leave there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like the one that Beetlejuice beat. That somebody got bit one time and I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. That's and the sad thing flaw. is, McGillivray had bought that dog's litter mate, and I thought he was going to jump on me and whoop my ass over that. <laughs> he was going to go home and kill that little dog, and I said, well, pick out your favorite dog and roll with him first. And then kill him. So he called me, and he said, God damn, what weight? I said, I'd hook that some bitch at about 35. So he hooked him up, and he wouldn't work a lick. And McGillivray could walk him about 200 yards down the road from the house, and that was as far as he was going. So he basically starved him in to, to wait and carried him to the West Coast and smashed the Englishman with him. Mm. I mean, smashed him, and then the Englishman and them bought him. Fuck, I think they give McGillivray five or $10,000 for that wow. little dog. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to ask him. Yeah. Hell, I'll get you an interview with him if you want it. Yeah. I'm willing, man. I'm willing. I want to get you an interview with, with my hero. Yeah. If I doubt he'll do it, though, Richard. I do, too. But I tell you what, if you show up over here, you and you and OTK in June, I, you can get your interview. Yeah, right there, huh? Right there. Yep. I yeah. think so. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I don't think it'll matter to him, because I'm telling you, he's down to the end of the damn rope, you know. Yeah, I know it. It's sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Last time, uh, you know, at the last old-timers get-together, when I walked up to him, it took him a little while to remember me, you know? No, and... I'm not talking about Danny. Oh, not Danny? No. Oh. Hell, you could interview Danny on the phone, but okay. he'll say, what'd you say, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. He's short. He ain't going to give you no answers. Yeah, yeah. Well, whoever you're talking about, I'll, 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 I'd I'll, like to interview him, too. That's, yeah. you know, the man, too, yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. A lot of people. I told you what, Jack Kelly, when I brought the old man up and said, I think he might come. He said, there really is somebody named that. I said, well, yeah. He said, well, I was wondering. He said, I've always heard of that name. I was wondering if it was a man or a myth. I said, from 14 foot, he was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> you take it to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You realize how many people that he made famous? Wow. And he, he never fucking stepped out in the limelight, but that was his handiwork. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Roland Potno didn't breed booger. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah. Wow. All righty. We, now, we talked about some of this stuff, but I'm going to go over it again so everybody else can hear. And uh, just tell them, like, like you told me, uh, how often did you check your red blood cell count, and how many days out did you take your last reading? <laughs> well, brother, I'm going to tell you, <coughs> if my dog didn't look right, I'd carry it to the vet and get a red count run. Right. If my dog's on and I can look at his gums, I don't have to pull a red count. Hell, my dog's healthy. Right. But I tell you, when I would take, you know, a healthy dog... And not go. Well, I, I used to go to dock with it. And I told you I'd come out with, hell, a 50 to 53 red count. And the first time I thought it was really important, you know. And I told him, well, damn, Doc, that's way too thick. That's way too thick. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, God damn, with that much red count, the blood can't even circulate. He'd be pumping fucking jello. He laughed. He said, it ain't got nothing to do with the viscosity of the blood. Mm. He said, no. He said, 
look at it like this. He said, what do y'all think's perfect? I said, well, the saying is about 43 is perfect. He said, well, you ten, you got 10 more people carrying water to the barn fire. What? He said, look at it like your barn's on fire. You got 43 some bitches over there running with water buckets. You got 53 over here. Mm. 53 is going to put their fire out quicker. That's the option going to go into your bloodstream. Gotcha. Into your brain. It's carried there by red. Right. If you got a high white count, something's wrong. If you low red and high white, something's wrong. You should be able to look at your dog's mouth. And I tell you another thing, when you put your dog in keep, Richard, and I know you do this, every day when you take that dog off that chain, first thing I do is open her mouth up and smell their breath. Mm -hmm. If something's going wrong internally in yeah. your dog, yep. his breath's going to tell you. Yeah. I, 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 I mentioned that yesterday on a podcast. I go, dog's breath really? don't stink. You know, no. and it's not supposed to stink. If it, you smell some foul odor coming out of your dog's mouth, something's wrong with something you. wrong. He's sick inside. Most of the time, liver. Gotcha. Same with the human. If you know your friend's got good hygiene and he brushes his teeth three times a day and he still got breath that'll melt you down, he's got a bad liver, brother. Mm. He needs to check with the doctor. Right. Yep. That's what happened to Wild Bill. He died at 50 with liver failure. Mm, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've mentioned it before. You know, now now that you can go online, you can buy a thing to check your blood count. We didn't have none of that back then. Oh, I just yeah, went on how my, how my dog felt, how he looked, how he acted, what type of shape he was in. And look at your dog. Pay attention. That's it. If his gums is pale, hell, he ain't right. Right. Yep. If he takes a shit and he's got a white ring around the inside of his asshole, he ain't right. That's supposed to be red ring. Right. If his tongue hangs out and it's white or his pecker hangs out and it's white, hell, that's wrong. Yeah. You know, I, learn, I, learned, uh, I learned from a friend of mine, he used to take a, you know, you know how you lift the skin and do the count and all that? He did uh -huh. that. He did that on their gums. So he'd press their gums and do the count like that. Yeah, see how long it took it to turn back back. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thought. Yeah. That's a good idea. I see exactly knew what he was doing. I never did it. Right. Same my, here. My, my main thing is every day I open my dog's mouth, I smell his breath, and I look at his gums. Mm -hmm. If them gums is going pale, you got something going wrong. Yeah. Yeah. If they got a bad odor, you got something going wrong. I think it's just good horse sense, you know, common sense, what country sense, whatever you want to call it. Being around animals, you get to know them. And it's exactly, Richard. We country boys. We farm boys. No matter how, we might try to sound high pollutant and yeah. we know this and yeah. we know that. We're fucking farm boys, yeah. but we grew <laughs> me, up me, barefooted and dirt between our toes. Yeah, yeah. Me and you talked about we eat the same crap, you know, and we lived in yeah. different states and all that stuff, and we eat this and that and a did the same miles thing. miles apart, but we <laughs> lived the same fucking life, yeah. man. Poor life. Yeah, exactly. And poor man, he, he gonna pay more attention to detail, more especially when he got a nickel sitting out there in, in jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. You're right, Joe. Well, think about it. Back in the Depression and the days before, when them old men was fighting them dogs, and if they did one for a hundred dollars, goddamn, that's a uh, that's a month's salary, man. Yep, you're right. A hundred dollars in the depression, hell, my grandpa got a dollar and a quarter a week. Yeah. And raised eight kids. Yeah. What but was a loaf of bread? Idiot. Five cents or something? Something like that, you know. They didn't buy a loaf of bread. <laughs> they bought flour. That was for the city folks. Yeah, mine didn't either. Yes, they lived on a farm. Hell, yeah. they raised everything they eat. Yeah. My grandpa raised cotton and worked in the logging yeah. woods with a cross-cut saw. Yeah. My my yeah. parents and grandparents bought 50-pound sacks of flour. Right. You know. Make sh made your shirts out of the damn flour sacks. Oh, yeah. Hell, that's yeah. exactly. Same lifestyle, brother. Yep. Yeah. But same that's thing. why we know that. You know, what you going to do? Hell, your old hog sick. Well, we got a doctor. Yep. Your old plow mule's down. That's one me. Well, we're going to give it a yeah. plug a day's work. Yeah. Cattle, same thing. Pigs, hog, yeah. all that. You know. Yeah. You remember day's work, that old chewing tobacco? Yeah. 
You that's the first that that's the first one I tried when I was a youngster. That made Whoa, me sick as Lord. shit. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. That <laughs> shit I never I never put you in the back or in my mouth since. Me bro. either, man. Me either. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh you know, we talked ab about the decks. If you want to talk about it, Joe, tell them uh, some of the things you told me, you know, how it works and why you use it and well, benefits I and was all that. Under, yeah. I was under the impression you use decks to dry your dog out the last 24 to 26 hours. So I'm going over there and I'm talking to Doc about it and he's pretty knowledgeable, hell you know. And he come out of, down in Floresville from Carver's hometown. And Doc's daddy was a cockfighter in New Maurice. And Doc told me, I said, well, you know, he said, what do you use? What do you need the decks for? I said, oh, I'm going to dry my dog out. What are you talking about? I said, it dries them out. He said, no, it don't. It's not a diuretic. I said, well, it dries one out. He said, I'm telling you, it don't dry one out. He said, what you feed him is going to dry him out because it's going to take the fluid and bring it to his stomach. He said, what you... What you, the benefits of that dexamethasone is going to benefit you more than anything? I said, what? He said, the fact that it relaxes, it's an aspirator, a bronchial aspirator. I said, what is that? It opens all of the little air bubbles and passages and capillaries or whatever they call them, all the passages in your lung, it re relaxes them, opens it up. Full blown, as hot, big as they can get. It relaxes your blood veins and your arteries. They get bigger. Mm. That's why it takes swelling away. Mm -hmm. And he told me, all oh, that's good and everything because your heart's not having to work as hard to pump the blood around. He said, but the best thing about it's a catabolic tendencies. I said, what the hell is that, Doc? He said, the uh, ability of the dexamethasone to make oxygen bond to the red blood cell. Mm. And if you give the dex, you know, 26, 24 hours out, you cover that dog up. That's why I told you I carry them out. I don't lead them out there. I carry them out. I set them down and pick them up and bring them in, cover them up. Right. Keep them totally isolated. Let him lay down and do nothing but rest. And the more he breathes, the more oxygen them red blood cells are stacking in his muscles. And that's where they stack up, the spare oxygen. And I don't know all this scientific bullshit about how when it goes to pulling out of your muscles and this and that. I can't tell you about that. Right. I can tell you if you've got a 53 count and you've worked him hard enough and you fed him right and in the end you dex him, shit he'll be there all night long i ain't saying the deck's what done it but but all I that together well, i will say it helps it's a whole damn nine yards Ricky. yeah we talked about that you yeah. know when i told you i give you my keep explicitly step by step yes sir that day we talked and we wasn't interviewing right and I, I didn't lie to you one bit that's what i do every bit of it and you can read it it's nothing complicated right it it's very bad. time consuming. Yeah. You never lied to me yet, Joe. I don't expect oh. you to. And, you know, the, the the information you're given, you know, m most people wouldn't even look at it that way or don't know about it. Or if they do, they ain't telling nobody, you know. But that's probably the best explanation I've heard regarding decks of anybody. And, and you know, I've been and all over the place. It, I talked to a lot of different people. Point. Don't give it in the vein, under the skin. Right. All under the skin. Give it. I use a three-quarter inch needle, mm -hmm. a big bore, though, so I ain't got to fight the dog to do it. Right. We we'll use a three-quarter inch long, pretty good-sized bore because the shit's hard to, to shoot through. And I get halfway between the top of the neck and the bottom of the neck and that thick muscle about halfway between the shoulder and the ear, and I poke it in there. Mm-hmm. I don't ever put it in their stifles. Right. Well, even even in that little bitty short needle, you have it 
a tendency they'll cripple up in the stifle behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll work out of it, but they cripple up to begin with. And hell, if they favor in it when they get in there, I want them rocking. Yeah. Not yeah. limping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not limping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I do with yeah. it and why I do it. It uh, is. I found out that ain't how you dry a dog out. Yeah. And I found out you let a dog dry himself out. I found out the same thing. You'll be a lot better off. That's what I tell these guys. Well, you know, you got to do this. and You give them two ounces. You give them four ounces. I said, you give them a damn water bucket full. What? I said, you don't know how much water that dog needs or wants. When you think you know more than the dog knows about what the dog needs, that's where you go to getting off the track and fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He needs water, he'll drink it. He don't need it, he, he won't drink it. He'll drink it, and you can measure it, Richard, at the end of the keep, that last week, when you bring one in, kennel him up, black him out, and you only take him out for him to dump and piss, mm -hmm. and you put him back in there, and you can measure your water intake. You put a bucket in there, he ain't going to turn over or nothing, okay? You put 16 ounces of water in that damn bucket. 24 hours later, you pull that bucket out and you pour it back in there and how much water you got left. Well, I got 13 and a half ounces. Well, he drank two and a half ounces last there night. There you go. Simple. It's simple as that. Simple. Well, when you tell people they won't drink two and a half ounces, well, then they interpret that as to mean they ain't supposed to drink but two and a half ounces. Right. And if you go to just giving them water once a day, and, you know, they ain't going to get but six ounces, they going to drink six ounces. Yeah. When they get the opportunity, they going to drink it. And if you think they going to go on just two ounces a day, you going to dry them out too dry. Mm -hmm. Just yep. leave it there and let them do what they want. And if they ain't going to drink two ounces at one time. But if that's all they're going to get, they're going to drink every bit of it at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's common sense right there. Joe. Yeah. Dogs ain't well, stupid. Sometimes they're smarter than us. <laughs> go, goes back again, Richard, to being a country boy and having enough common sense that you can read. And, and you can, you know, okay, they say they're drying him out and he ain't going to drink but two and a half ounces a day. Well, that don't mean... Because you said that, he's only allowed two and a half ounces a day for a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's yeah. why it's hard to tell anybody what to do. Right. Because they ain't going to listen or pay attention. No. Nope. You know, you do, but hell. Yeah. You're a different kind of cat. Yeah. Yes, sir. That, you know, and honestly, Joe, people, they just not going to believe you. They think you're lying to them or you're telling some tall story. It don't matter. You can be honest as a day long. And somebody well, is not going to believe you, man. Yeah. Or tell you, don't, tell, tell you don't listen to him. He's going to wreck your fucking dog. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't feed like that. And like I told you how I feed. That ain't no bullshit. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's a lot. And it's enough. But you work your dogs well, hard, too. They need that. They need it. Yeah. Well, if you pile all that feed up in my pile, you know, and look at it and said, oh, shit, if you've been used to doing it the other way. It ain't no way this is going to work. Yeah. Well, like when they flipped out when I was down yonder and they had old salt down yeah. there. You know, they had him, not not us. Right, right. And they seen what I was feeding no jinx, and it ain't no fucking way. I said, oh, yeah. You going to let her eat that bit of that? I said, if she wants it. Mm-hmm. If she quits, you know, I'll put her back up. But, hell, she'll probably eat dog. Well, how you going to make weight? I said, that ain't going to be in her when you weigh her, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that dog pee. That yeah. ain't got nothing to do with what she's going to weigh 26 hours from now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't understand that. They think that last feeding, you got to just give them, got them just a spoonful. Yeah. No. And that's the worst thing you can do. Yep. I agree. More especially if you decide they ain't getting but a spoonful of feed and two ounces of water a day for a week. You get you there, be, you ain't got no dog. You no. got a hole. Yeah, you're going to be weak as hell, you know. Mm -hmm. 
If people yeah. would would it, just experiment a little, do that with their dogs, feed them all that food. If they would pay attention, they see when that dog ate, their belly is round, it's full. Yeah. The next oh, morning, yeah, the, the next belly blows. The, Shit, they look like yeah. they swallowed a balloon. Yeah, but the next morning, they ain't, they ain't bloated no more. It's nope. All, nope. it's gone. They absorb nope. it. They shit it out. You know, it just. Yeah, you got to do and stuff they, like that. And when they shit, Richard, they ain't shitting piles of mustard. No, shit. it ain't a lot. You no, know, nope. this is kind of gross. They shit in little black rocks. Yep, yep. You can hear right. them when your dog's guts is right. You can hear that turd when it hits the ground. Mm. Boom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's country boy talk, Richard. Yeah. I hope him. I hope him. PhD fellas, we don't offend them. Yeah, no, nah, I think they'll get the gist of it, you know. And yeah. and all this, you know, the only thing I can attest to is I've seen you do it, Joe. So there's no yeah. question. I've seen your dogs oh. in condition. And you know how highly I think of you. Well, you know, it just, I, I the, appreciate the, my, that, my point is I the proof is there. The yeah. yeah. You know, and I I seen told it. you, like our friend Mr. Bean, the compliment he gave me. God damn, man. I told him, Mr. Bean, please don't talk like that. I said, my head's too big already. <laughs> and, hey, I was talking to him the other day and telling him how much, you know, I respected him because yeah. of what he had did for me years ago. And I'd do anything I could could if within my power of whatever he needed. Right. And he told me, well, Joe, you don't understand, son. He said, I've been a big fan of yours since the very first time I seen you. Mm. I said, what? He said, oh, yeah, I'm a fan of yours, he said, since you was just a young man. He said, buddy, <laughs> those old school fellas learn real quick that you meant business. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's good people, too, I mean, man. Well, that's as good as it gets, man, yeah. for, to get a compliment like that from him or, mm -hmm. or, or Gene. Yep. Gene's or, a living legend. Mm -hmm. Yep, he is, man. Well, that's, he's right there with Danny. He is. I mean, yeah. And, and you know, in our opinion. Yeah. Well, but the guys that read the books and stuff, they don't know. But I tell you, them people listening yeah. to your videos, they should listen yeah. to that man. I'm yeah. going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk to him again. We've already spoke, you know, and we're going to do another one. But his, <laughs> his, you know, a lot of his stuff is back there. All you got to do is oh, yeah. go through that old stuff. He's in there. All over the, the place, dude. With, oh, with, hell, the proof is there, man. Yep, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I always follow him. I don't know. I, I I was kind of partial to the Oklahoma boys and the Texas guys and all that, Louisiana guys, you know, because they were just, a lot of them were so active and they had a lot of great dogs and stuff. So I remember, you know, from back in the day following them, all them guys, you know, Mr. Oh, bro, Leander. We hammered you know. each other. What's that? We hammered, we hammered each other. Yeah, yeah. Hell, like it, you know, like Leander said, hell, I never had to leave Church Point to find a match. Yeah. And we was the same, hell, right here on this border for 15 years. I didn't go nowhere. Mm hmm And, uh, hell, I really didn't get to branching out until Bayonne come here. Right. And then him and me decided he wants to go take on the fucking world, so we went and got him. Mm-hmm. He, oh, yeah. he knew a good dog man when he seen one. <laughs> You know, Richard, a crazy feeling. I was coming out of Canada one time, then up to, to uh, Roll Bar and uh, Can-Am, and one of them shows, and when I left there, I went out by Can-Am's place, which is way the hell on out there west, and my buddy was with me, and I had two empty dog boxes in the back of my truck, and got them, we coming down I-35, and we tooling along, and we south of Des Moines, Iowa, somewhere. And there was a truck run up beside us. It had about four or five dog boxes in the back, and three people in the front seat, two guys and a girl. And they had a dog loose in the back seat of the truck, an extended cap. Well, they looking over there, rubbernecking and shit, and we tear on. We get way to hell up the highway there, pretty near Kansas City, Missouri. And I pull over to get gas. Boom, this truck rolls down in there beside us, and a guy gets out. He said, I got to ask you a question. I said, all right. 
He said, what's your name? And I told him my name. He said, no, that, that, then I'm sorry you're not who we thought you were. I said, who did you think? Wasn't he pointed? He said, that guy over there said you was Mr. Gray. <laughs> and I looked at that guy. I said, what makes you think I'm Mr. Gray? He said, I don't think you're Mr. Gray, sir. I know you're Mr. Gray. I said, where in the hell are you from? He said, I'm from Great Britain. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you talk about a, a feeling, Richard, and my friend about fell out. I said, from Great Britain, how in the hell did you recognize me on the damn freeway? Because he was riding shotgun, you know, and yeah. the guy from uh, Iowa, it, the plowboy was who it was from Iowa. Uh -huh. And uh, this guy told me, he said, I saw you before. And he had seen me at one of them convention moon dials. Mm. And like, well, I'll be down. And my friend, he flipped out. He said, God damn it, if I hadn't have seen it, I'd have never believed you. 2,000 plus miles from home, <laughs> and a son of a bitch from Great Britain recognizes you they're driving down the freeway. <laughs> 60 miles an hour. Wow. Well, they were coming up beside me looking, you know, yeah. both of Yeah. 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 That that's like lightning hitting twice, you know. That old boy, the plow boy, was pretty cool too. You remember reading about him? Oh yeah, back years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure do. Yeah, I and remember most everybody. Yeah, all up to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, with that, Joe, we're about out of time, man. This is people gonna love this again. I appreciate it, and thanks for all your help. Well, and, did uh, we get all the people talked about you wanted to talk about? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All righty. Well, that's so. what, you know, I'd rather do that and discuss technical bullshit, man. I ain't, I ain't too technical. No, but, you know, the thing is, Joe, you can explain it so anybody could understand it. You know, that's, oh, yeah. that's well, kind of how I see myself doing, you know. Yeah. Oh, Richard, you, you shouldn't be the school boy. You should be the professor, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, hey, Joe. You got more going than anybody. Take care, brother. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Bye.